So, patch 321, hot on the heels of Star Citizen 320, is the second patch in which the whole sea is playable in-game. During 20 there were a few bugs impacting the experience, but to what extent do they carry over into the current patch? The best way to find out is to dust off the whole sea and take to the stars. I'm Forrester, and this gameplay video shows an example of doing exactly that, bolting a full cargo load to the bulkheads of the whole sea, and looking out keenly for game-breaking bugs. Spoiler alert, they're still here. Whilst this is a single run, much of the footage has been sped up to keep the overall length down, and those parts have been clearly marked as such. But there's much cargo to move, so let's get started. And of course, the first step in the gameplay loop is actually buying the cargo. So, with the location where the Misk Hull Sea is, we head to the admin office and pick up our cargo. In this case, we're going to be going for helium. It's one of the types of cargo that tends not to have a problem loading up in the Hull Sea, and it can be sold at various places in the verse. Quickly speeding up the footage to get into the Hull Sea, um, spawned it and you enter via a docking port, which is what you can see here. So having bought the cargo, the next step of the whole sea gameplay is to actually go to pick it up, so we'll need to go to one of the cargo decks. And step one of that is to undock from the station. Lots of people have been having problems and challenges with undocking, for me, I don't touch any flight controls until I'm properly undocked, and that usually works just okay for me. If in the unlikely event I do have some challenges, I try switching the engines off, uh, or I try contacting both ATC and cargo control. But you can see in this instance, the station was quite happy to release me, no problem whatsoever. That said, quite often the station will automatically give a cargo docking area to go and load up the cargo. That hasn't happened in this instance, so I'm just contacting the cargo bay through as many different channels as I can to try and get that clearance so that I can go and load up the cargo. And while I'm doing that, I'm just moving away from the docking port area just so that I don't get any station harbour master cawing at me on the radio saying, get out of the way. So here we are, this is Seraphim Station at night time. It's pretty cool, you get the glow of the planet below, all of the little lights that kind of decorate the station itself. I do miss Olisar though, don't tell anyone. So here I'm just trying all channels to get hold of Seraphim Cargo to be able to get my loading port. And there we have, we've now got to go to Cargo Deck 12. So that's what we'll do. From a cargo loading perspective, I find the most reliable way is where it's got the little arrow on the cargo deck, have that under the belly of the ship. So you essentially align the ship to have that cargo arrow underneath it and then try and be oriented as uh, parallel as possible to the sides of the different cube faces. And that usually gets you oriented correctly. That said, I still have lots of problems loading up certain cargo. It's a frustration of mine. They're all quite happy to sell you cargo, but then when you try to load it, they don't want anything to do with you. Um, in this case, I've forgotten to extend my spindle, so we'll do that now. But some goods I find are just more problematic than others, which is why I quite like this helium route. Less challenging. So just smooth the ship out. Mm -hmm. 
and I know I'm in pretty good places, so I'm just waiting for those cargo spindles to extend. And there we have, we've got the timer commencing cargo transfer. So here you are, I've sped this up. So it's a sped up cinematic shot of all of the cargo being loaded. In reality, this takes just below five minutes, but you are obviously watching this at a much extended speed. And this is just a very unfortunate waiting game. And you need to be on top of things as well, because the minute your cargo loading finishes, as it's about to, you need to move straight away, or again, the harbour master will be getting very grumpy and try and take your ship from you. Initiating ship storage procedure. For your safety, please vacate the area. Now here's another interesting little bug. You see all of those little cargo boxes on the heads up display. Those are all of the boxes on each of the spindles on the whole sea. They're showing up as individual cargo boxes. Strange. So the next step is going to be jumping into quantum travel. Those uh, cargo boxes are making it a little bit harder to see the quantum jump marker, but there it is. So we're going to hop across to OM1, which looks like it's on the sunny side of Crusader, which will be nice. Here you go, nice external view. Sun rising over Crusader. There we are, beautiful. Incidentally, I'm quite often uh, correctly reminded uh, when I'm doing voiceover and commentary, that's not the sun, that's Stanton. The sun is our sun in Seoul, and Stanton is just any other star. That says, a sunrise, sunset, feel like more natural words than star rise, star set, Stanton rise. So if it's all right, I might keep using sunrise and sunset just as a common point of reference for people. And here we are, we'll make the jump. So we're heading across to Hurston. This has been a common location that I've done in all of my runs that buys the helium. Incidentally, I, when I'm feeling less secure in my trade runs, I will often sell the helium and then literally head straight back. I won't buy anything else. I will head straight back to buy more helium because sometimes buying goods from Hurston can be one of those locations that's challenging. And when I say Hurston, I mean Everest Harbour in orbit. So here's a times 12 speed quantum travel in the whole sea. This is without the upgraded quantum drive. I do recommend upgrading the quantum drive. This was, I think, a very early day of patch 321. So I have not yet had the opportunity to do that. So back to normal speed as we approach Hurston. Incidentally, on the topic of quantum travel, since the new jump point areas have been added into Stanton, the distance between some of them and the centre of the system is a lot further than some of the previous distances in-game, which probably gives a little bit more credence to ships that have a longer range, a more quantum fuel store than is needed previously. I think it was always said that Stanton was not one of the larger systems in terms of the distances between points therein, and so starting to see some of that in the distance to the jump point stations, albeit perhaps not on the same scale as the likes of Pyro etc, it's quite interesting. And that's demonstrated just there as I hopped into the star map and saw the Magnus jump point pretty far away. So at this point I'm just looking for a route around Hurston. Frustratingly, sometimes the orbital markers don't show, or well, the system can't figure out how you're going to get there, and that's the case here. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump across to Microtech, cancel the jump halfway, well, not halfway, but a very short distance away, just that I'm around the planet of Hurston, and then we'll go to Everest from there. This will be a challenge that many a Star Citizen player is familiar with. Interestingly, recently announced at CitizenCon 2953, it's also a challenge that is potentially solved by some of the new quantum jump, quantum boosting tech. Excited for when we actually see that in-game. And I really like seeing the planets from this sort of distance. 
you know, seeing Herson there, little marble. It's a really cool distance. It's a shame we don't have more things that are kind of that sort of distance away from the planets to showcase them. So here we are, Everest Harbour. I'm afraid it is the dark again. Not particularly helpful for showcasing some beautiful gameplay, but quite helpful, I think, for showcasing some real gameplay. So the whole C, the SCM limiter, is very low, so for things like manoeuvring in towards the station here, you will see I've increased the speed. It's only 200 meters a second, which is below the limiter on some ships, but for the whole C, that's quite high up, and that's just to close the distances more quickly. And of course, we need to dock with the station so that I can get out to go to a trade console. This is one of my frustrations about the gameplay loop for the whole sea at the moment. When you've got a whole bucket load of cargo on the back and you know that you're going to want to sell it, it would be great if you could go straight to the cargo deck and then offload the cargo before having to dock. Whereas now, if you wanted to sell this cargo, you have to dock, sell the cargo, go back to the ship, go to the cargo deck, unload the cargo. Then if you want to store the ship, you have to dock again. It's just needlessly long. But anyway, we've got our docking port, so we're going to head there now. I'm using the scanning ping, not so much to scan for interesting things, but more so so that I can actually see the silhouette of the station, just so that I make sure that I'm not going to accidentally fly into something. It is very dark on this side of Hurston at the moment, and the last thing that I want to do when I've got a full cargo hold of gear on the whole sea is accidentally fly into something. I mean, you might argue that would make a great gameplay video, but it would not be great for my in-game wallet. Incidentally, the Hull Sea is quite a good ship for learning the docking mechanics. So you can see on this docking user interface, there are actually, there's a lot of information on here. So I was just getting a bit lower there. There's a lot of information on the user interface about the orientation of the ship, your position in space versus the docking port. And actually, you can't always auto dock right away. So if you're trying to dock in first person, this is quite a useful way of getting used to the screens and seeing what's what. Which may become more useful in the future, it may not, who knows. So at this point I'm just trying to line things up so that I can use the auto dock functionality. For me, with the whole C, I just want to get close enough to be able to auto dock. I'm really not that concerned about aligning it up perfectly myself and then pressing the strafe in. I think if I used a dual flight stick setup, I might be more willing to do that, but since I don't, I'm quite happy to auto dock this thing, especially when it's got a million UEC worth of cargo aboard. All right, so with there or thereabouts, Z axis is on. Y-axis is there or thereabouts. X-axis is close. So I'm just mushing the auto dock to try and get it to accept. And it's not. Of course it's not. So I'm just going to hop into external view, have a quick check. That's where we are. Back up a little bit. That was close enough. There we go. And now try the auto dock. There we go. We're on. Docking complete. So at this point we'll hop out and we'll hop into the station to sell the goods. I do really like the ships that can dock. There's something that just it adds to the sense of scale when you've got ships that do that. So the likes of the 890 Jump, the likes of the Hammerhead, and now the whole sea, you feel like you are on a very big ship when you are docking via one of those docking collars.
Right, we know we're at docking port one. I really like the new signage at all these locations. I say new, it's been here for a while now, but being able to see exactly which location you're in is very helpful. That's the wrong elevator. And that's the right one. So we're going to head to the admin office just to sell up. And I'm expecting profits for this run to be about 200,000. But we'll see. So here we select the whole C from the list. And then cannot sell. Hmm. We'll try it again. When making this video, I thought, it's fine. It didn't sell first time, but I can get some footage of when I do sell up and share that at the end and just explain it was a one-time bug. Well, trying a few times since then, including upping sticks and heading to other locations that buy helium, I've not yet been able to sell that cargo. That's about a million UEC tied up with major difficulties to retrieve it. But that's just how it goes, I suppose. At least you're seeing some real gameplay and some real challenges that sometimes accompany that. Perhaps you'll let me know in the video comments if you've been suffering from similar challenges. If you enjoyed this gameplay video, pressing the like button will let me know I should make more like this. And if you're not yet subscribed given that you've got this far, you probably want to do that too, so that YouTube will know to show you more videos like this in the future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.